I'm Barry and Brandon, and this is episode three of the videos that go along with Daddy's Request. And this is Daddy's Request here. This is the cardigan version. The original version, as I'm sure we've been through several times, is uh, this one, which I made for my dad. That's why it's called Daddy's Request. It never fit in, as we've talked about. But um, this is uh, this is the original version. And the original version is a pullover and has no embellishments in the body whatsoever, which makes all of the attention come straight to up around your face, which is a good thing. And um, I know I've shown you this before, but I'll show you again. Here is the other version, the, the raspberry-ish version with all the, the stuff around the face. And you can see this one behind me. Um, it, last time that we met, I was um, working on the body, starting to work on the body. I had cast on, which you had, you have, hopefully have since the last time. Cast on, done the rib. I mean, first of all, you should have gotten your swatch. Then you can, and make sure you've got done your swatch or whether it's a speed swatch or a or, or short swatch or whether you decided to do a sleeve like I did, um, you should do a swatch to get gauge. Um, make sure that you block and um, wet and block your swatch because yarn does different things when it gets wet and it gets blocked out and it sometimes they relax and puff up a bit and um, that's exactly what happened to me because my gauge swatch turned out to be a sleeve and what the reason we did that is that this is the beautiful civility yarn from um elemental effects and jean was um saying you know sometimes people have uh get different types of gauge with this yarn um you may have to change needles you may not you know so what i ended up doing was ordering one skein of every single color so that i could just do this sleeve with a little bit of color work on it just to see how it was going to work gauge wise and when I did, I blocked it and pretty strenuously blocked it. I have a, I have a um, woolly board, which actually kind of stretch it, not stretches it, but it's not lying flat. It actually has got some t little bit, little tiny bit of tension on it. But it bloomed, it relaxed, and I've got gauge. So, yay. That's a good thing. So, um, my point being, oh, my point being was that I only ordered one skein of every single thing. So when I started, um, if you follow me on Instagram, you will see that um, one skein was not gonna work for the body. So I ran out of yarn um, and I had to get more yarn. And so, uh, which I did, and I continued on with the body. Now, if you are working um, either a cardigan version or the pullover version, and you're working it um, in a single color up to the underarm, up to where the yoke, yoke starts around in that point, then you um, are just working away. Now, what I did was um, I turned over the first, if you look at your charts, I have it right here, at least I think I do. The first, if you look at your chart, the first 17 stitches of the chart are like, are like this. And what I did is I took this and I turned it this way so that now I'm starting at 17 here, and that is exactly what I did to make, hello, to make um, that right there. So you can see that medallion is actually this medallion kind of right there. There's the, the second and third stitch of it, there's the first stitch of it. So when you do your repeats, this is an eight stitch repeat. So if this is stitch number one, we'll talk about charts when we get to the to the yoke, but if this is stitch number one, you get to stitch number eight, you start back at stitch number one so that this piece and the next eight would be here, which will complete the medallion. So what um, that's what I did here. So, um, But then um, you had to do the whole, and in my case here, the whole rest of the body of the sleeve. And um, for the, you see it's the same, the same 17 rounds upside down. Now there is some, um, a little bit of figuring involved, especially in the sleeve, to make sure that this patterning, um, if you are not a beginning color work person, um, you have to make sure you have some figuring to do to make sure that the center part of the sleeve if this is the underarm of the sleeve here and this is the top part, you want to make sure that that falls either in between the motifs or at the end of one of the motifs. It, you don't have to. It just looks better. 
and um, if you can, if you've done that before, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't done that before and you want to make this version, get in touch. I'll be more than happy to talk you through it. It's what you have to figure out how many of those medallions you're going to have. It's a, if it's an odd number, then your then your center stitch is going to be the point of one of the medallions. Um, and if it's that you've got an even number like I have, because I have four in this particular size, um, then my center stitch is in the is in is here in between. And if you've ever done patterning like that you'll you'll know but if you've got any issues please get in touch because I'll be more than happy to help you with that if you are just starting out and you would like some color consultation I'll be more than happy to talk to you about that too I just I love colors it's fun, fun to work on that so anyway um if you are working right along you have cast on you've gotten your swatch you've gotten your gauge you have cast on your um ribbing now you can adjust this any way you like um i don't like to do the same sweater twice so what i ended up doing and i may have talked about it last time is that instead of doing um a two and a half inch rib i did a three inch rib just because just to be different this is this one's probably three no this was two and a half that that one's two and a half I say, yeah, and it's still a one by one rib. Um, and then I just started working. Now, to me, if you're doing a cardigan, doing one of the cardigan versions, then um, you can see that there's my steak, right? Where is it? There. There's my steak. There are the pearl stitches on either side of the steak, right there. And then there's the, the, the rest of that. That's stitch one and stitch 10. Um, and then those are the, the eight stitches in between. So, um, and that's where you add your colors. If you, when you get to the yoke, we'll talk about this more. Um, you add your colors in that steak for the cardigan version. For the, um, just in case you're interested, for the pullover version, um, traditionally pullovers start on the back left hand corner. You can see here the jog right there. That, no, excuse me, I always say back left hand. It's actually back right. I, why do I keep saying that? It's back, the back right hand side. So because the sweater goes on, it's right back here. Why? I'm not sure. I know you don't want it dead center in the back because that's very obvious if you're walking away, if you're sitting in front of somebody, they can see that little jog. Um, if they look closely. I mean, it's real, it's kind of hard to tell. Well, it's not that hard. Anyway, depends what colors you use. But somehow if you have it kind of in that edge and, and when you think about it it's where you um add on the add the sleeves on when we do the yoke and that's what we'll end up doing is you'll work all the way up to the underarm of the body then we'll work all the way up to the underarm of the sleeves put them all on one needle and then work the yoke but in order to get them on one needle you'll do you'll put the back on one on knit the back off a needle onto one You'll knit the left sleeve, then the front, then the right sleeve. So the beginning of your round is in the back of your right shoulder blade, kind of right there. So that's how that works. That's for the pullover. For the cardigan, it's just really easy to do it right up the front because then you have no jog whatsoever. And um, But don't let the jog bother you. I've got two sweaters that way. Nobody ever mentions it. In fact, I find myself sometimes putting it on going, oh, I've got it on backwards. Nobody's ever noticed. It's just there. Um, so... Uh, oh, I was going to tell you, you have this long expanse here. If you're working the pullover version, you have this long expanse of um, plain stockinette. Boring stockinette. Mindless stockinette. Thought-provoking stockinette. Plan your next project stockinette. <laughs> it's, um, I just get tired of it because, I mean, this is I'm used to doing this, so I, it's just, just me. But um, if you would rather not be doing miles and miles and miles of just plain stocking it, and in this case you're not even it's not even flat where you knit a knit a row and I'm um, knit it yeah knit a row and purl a row. This is rounds, so you're just doing knitting around and around and around. It's good car knitting maybe. So what I decided to do was to do um, what's called lice. Um, I don't even want to know, I mean, you can imagine with how that started, but anyway, it's called lice. And it, what it is, is just one stitch um, at certain spaces, and it adds just a little bit of a color to it. What it does, it breaks the monotony of the thought-provoking stockinette. Um, I have done, because I have an eight-stitch repeat, oh, I'm pointing to it, because I have an eight-stitch repeat here and an eight-stitch repeat on the um, 
on the yoke. I mean, the yoke has an eight, the largest repeat is an eight stitch repeat. I have done um, a done these things every eight stitches and every eight rows and then have, you know, done. So if you have an odd number in between, in this case, um, there's seven stitches and the eighth one is the, um, is the different color. Um, that gives you seven stitches in the middle. So on the fourth stitch is where you would jog over. So this stitch here is the fourth stitch of, of in between these two. Hopefully that makes sense. So anyway, that's where you are. Go all the way up. It makes a, gives you a break. Um, the other way to do it, if you're not doing color work like I am with this down at the bottom or it, and um, you or you want to do it next time, you've got the pattern now, you can do it again um, and make it look entirely different. So um, what you could do, and I've done this before, is do these same things except instead of a different color, do a purl stitch so that you end up with just a little bit of texture in the plain stockinette, which gives you point places where you can mark progress. It gives you something to look forward to. I just get these, in this case, seven rounds done, and then I get to do another, um, you know, in this case, purl, in your case, if you're doing a purl stitch, purl round. It's pretty cool. Now, what I had did before is that when I've done this, is that, is that if this had all the purl stitches in it, it's, you don't know exactly where it's going to fit into here. And if you've done it right enough, and if it'll line up, then your purl stitch would either match the the point of your um, the point of your medallion, or it will fall in between. Depending, you know, here here it falls in between, and here it matches the point of the medallion. Um, you don't want to have them right on the end of the points, and you don't want to have them right, you know, in here. Um, but you stop a couple of rows, you know, try to stop so it's not in, just depending on how long your length is, so it's not sort of in, intruding in on your um, what's this called? Yoke? <laughs> Turning it on your yoke. Sometimes I will do a um, just about two or three rounds before the yoke start, before the color work starts, I will do a purl round, which gives that just a little bit of line of demarcation and kind of sets off the um, of demarcation of a uh, texture and sets off your yoke. It's up to you. We'll talk about it more because it won't happen. That won't happen until you get the sleeves done. If you are doing that, though, with the purl stitch or with the color, um, I would make sure that you have the same number of rounds um, after your last either lice round or texture round um, at the top of your sleeves as you do at the top of your body. Because when you put the two together, you want you don't want the sleeves to have you know uh, lice round or texture round and four and four rounds of plain stockinette and the body to have just two and then your your it won't line up. You could do it that way, but it's so much nicer when they line up. So in this case, this this sleeve is finished, and there are two rounds of um, this is the this is the, where, where is it right. There. That is the last of the, the lice rounds, and I've got two just plain stockinette rounds at the top of that. And the same thing um, with the body. This body is done. Um, I did the, la the last lice round and two, two rounds. When I finish um, this sleeve, I'll do the same thing. So, but you need to get the body done up to the underarm, and that's up to you how long you want to make that done. I've made suggestions in the pattern, but it's up to you how long. I'm making my cardigans a little bit longer um, just because I like, I don't like to have to be constantly trying to pull a thing down and wondering if it's riding up. So I like to have them a little bit longer. And then you get to start sleeves, and that's what we'll talk about next time is um, starting the sleeves. If I'll also talk about um, centering the pattern, excuse me, centering the pattern on the sleeve if you want to work the pattern. And um, we'll talk about um, increases up the underside of the sleeve um, that way until you reach a certain point. Um, and all sorts of things, I'm sure. I'm sure I'll ramble off about something. <laughs> but anyway, um, so thank you so much for, for joining me here. Um, also, thank you for, um, you need to purchase Daddy's Request sweater. It's on discount until May 1. 
Um, if enough people ask me, I might extend that to May 15, but right now it's May 1, this, the, the pattern's on discount. Um, it is um, pretty easy. There are all sorts of these variations. I'll be happy to talk to you about it in any other way. If you're interested in the um, the various, oh, it's way over there, but anyway, the various um, colorways I've pulled, um, four colorways of this um, Elemental Effects Civility. Let me know and I'll hook you up with Jean and she'll get you, you can order some yarn from her. It's, I said, it's a luxury yarn. It's got silk in it, it's got merino in it. It's very, it's a luxury yarn. It's very squishy and nice. Um, but if you wanna, you know, splurge a bit, you know, hey, you make one, this is, this is um, uh, Cascade 220. Some other ones are, I don't even know what they are. One of the, the raspberry one is some yarn I bought in Ireland when my brother got married over there. So, um, and the rest of it's stash yarn. If you um, get through with, you know, one like this and you want to make a little more luxury version, then let me know. We'll, we'll hook you up. So, um, I think that's all I have to say. So, let me try this again. Thank you <laughs> for joining me. Um, I am Barry and Brandon. I um, have um, got a website at Brandon Knitting Designs. My Ravelry name is Varian Brandon. My Instagram name is Varian Brandon. My um, uh, Facebook page is Brandon Knitting Designs. So you can find me about anywhere. I'm checking, not all the time, but I've got alerts on everything. So if you send me a note, I'll see it. So I thank you so much for joining me and taking care. And if you have any questions, please feel free to give me a call. So, or give me a, send me a contact of some sort. You. I'll see you next time for episode four of Daddy, the Daddy's Request Sweater. Bye-bye.